the kind of day today where it's a pleasure to stay inside and do your ironing. <laughs> I hope it cheers up later because um, it would be very nice sitting out in the paddock having a cuppa with Franco, which is what we do at four o'clock. Well, we have been all the way through lockdown. <laughs> Um, Margot's in the chair there, Bunny was in the bed there. Yes, I have a dog bed on my sofa. <laughs> it's because she drops hairs everywhere, so if I put the dog bed on there, the dog bed contains the hairs, and then when I want to sit in it, I just put the dog bed on the floor. Ah. Bucketing it down today, as I've just shown you, and um, I've just made a cup of tea. It's uh, one that Mioka sent me, the maple, Canadian maple tea. Oh, it's delicious. I don't know what I'm going to do when it's finished. It smells lovely. Um, and I thought I would go, ow. Do you know what? This queer carpet looks nice and all that, but it's blooming uncomfortable on your feet. It's blooming uncomfortable to sit cross-legged on. If you spill anything on it, it stains. It's really hard wearing, but it's not very nice. <laughs> right, I was going through my basket, wasn't I? I was trying to, f I wasn't going through my basket. I was getting things out of my basket to show you yesterday and everything was in a big old muddle. So I thought today I'll sort it out. And in doing that, I would show you what I've got in it. <laughs> it is such a muddle. So in no particular order, I've got an empty notions pouch, tilde, with a stamp on the front, little birds. And this was in, it was a So Sweet Violet, it's definitely, it's by So Sweet Violet, it's by Jules. And I think it was um, an advent calendar that she did. I think it was her first advent calendar that she did. And I've used it so much that it needs a wash. So put that over there. Sock blockers, we've all seen sock blockers. They go over there. Some yarn scraps from some socks. Thought we were about to be interrupted. Alpaca Soft DK, I made socks out of it. I'm pretty certain I have vlogged about Oh, that's a different one. That's not the same. There. I've vlogged about those socks before, I'm sure. I'll perhaps put in a clip of them. Um, I've got a full skein here of... Lolo did it. Yarn. And a tiny little bit. These would... They were from um, they were from Franca for Christmas one year. She bought two sets. It was the um, the sisters set. <laughs> I knew I'd be interrupted. Oh, that was a call. Um, it was inspired by the grocery girls, and Franca said I could choose which set I liked, and I was cheeky, and I said. I like the grey from that set and the grey from that set. <laughs> so she let me have it. And we knitted together the um, the Pure Joy shawl. Um, and Franca loves hers and wears hers plenty. And I never wore mine. So I frogged it. And this colour became the Francis socks. That was a test knit that I did for... Um, Emily, I'm trying to think of her Instagram handles. She's got two. So one of them is Salt City Knits. And then she also has the Yarn Brary, Yarn Dyeing Company. Gorgeous stuff. Gorgeous. I've had a few of her um, 
colorways and they oh they really are lovely anyway um i knitted the francis socks out of those so this can all be packed away now that can go in my scraps that can go in my stash ah what's this i knitted some wrist warmers no i didn't i knitted my oh i knitted a hot water bottle cover out of this and my beret gray beret this is lolo did it every day sock in the color something about a hippo naked hippo so that can go into my stash because that's quite big that's enough for perhaps another beret definitely another hot water bottle so that can go um tiny little nugget they were heel that was heels on a pair of socks um some socks that i knitted out of the secret garden colorway by the yarn by yarn yeah the yarn brewery no yarn brewery oh. and um i did contrast heels and toes and cuffs no not cuffs what else is in here oh i went through a phase of no, that's not very good. There's a bit of cotton hanging off there. I went through a phase of enjoying string quilting to use up some scraps. These were scraps from my uh, patchwork blanket up there. And I made it into a little, like a work tool kind of pouch thing. And uh, I used this quite a lot for a while but I don't seem to be using it now don't know why nothing wrong with it it's very nice <laughs> don't know why I'm not using it I think it's because I've got variety I have a variety of little projects stacked about so I've got my northeasterly in the den I've got um, I'll show you in a minute what I've got in this little bag. This is like my paddock knitting bag. And then I just cast on some socks this morning that I was talking about yesterday. Um, ow, they're upstairs. So I've just got little projects everywhere. But if I have a big project that I'm doing, like a jumper or big shawl or a wrap then I would probably give this one out again over there oh I've got this nice little pouch by Jezebel B I bought that late one night <laughs> when I was tired I couldn't resist it I've never used it I intend to go through every single project bag that I've got. I'm going to lay them all out and um, categorise them all and then pack them away properly and just see them all, all together so that I can understand that I do not need any more because I can't stop myself from making more and buying more and also, I receive them now and again as beautiful gifts. So I, I need to stop making and buying. That can go over there. Oh, neck and shoulder ache. Oh, this is brilliant, this is. I dig this out now and again when Bill's having a bad bad time when he's really struggling my friend joe pickle lily who i knew from a knit club i used to go to um gave me this when i ran into her unexpectedly at um, fiber east it's absolutely brilliant in fact i've made a purchase this morning on her um etsy account because she just makes she makes loads of lovely things for knitters but also she's a key stage one 
teacher and forest school teacher and she makes lovely gifts sort of play gifts educational gifts for children so this is brilliant it's um what do you call it a busy bag it's, it's an i spy bag so in there she's got all the things that are on this card and you just get your child to fiddle about through the buttons to find it so what's this we've got coming up here we've got we've got a dinosaur coming up here so let, there we go dinosaur um and then on the back she's got some more ideas can you find something that begins with the same sound as your name so i need to find something that begins with g Here we go. A glass marble. This is brilliant for when Bill's having one of his overwhelmed, overstimulated, unable to communicate moment, which he hasn't had as many of during lockdown, hence why it's in this little basket here. Normally I have this in the car for when he's got wound up by something when we've been out and about or um one of his brothers has done his head and oh look at that tiny little dice teeny tiny little dice so i wanted to talk about that I've been wanting to talk about that probably for about two years so this morning i the purchase that i made was for my friend's two little boys because um I don't think she's watching this because she's far too busy so it's safe to talk about it i made annabelle the the quilt and along with it i would like to send the little boys something so i bought for arthur a little it's like a busy mat it's like a oh it's hard to, to describe it it's like a pouch with storage for cars hello hello you going? I'm going out. Okay, bye bye. See you later. It's like a little pouch with storage for cars, and then the flap has got um, traffic lights and somewhere to park and a little road on it. So it's for when they're out and about. And then for Rupert, I bought, he likes dinosaurs, so I bought him a little, um, like a little Jurassic Park mat stroke pouch. So the di and the dinosaurs come with that one. So hopefully they won't take too long to arrive in the post because we don't live that far away from one another. Um, I think Jo's probably only posting every now and again because she's probably trying to keep out the way of people. But once it's in the post, that'll arrive and then I'll send everything off up to Chester. we got in here then oh sherry iris lavender pouch that can go on my stash to protect things then talk about those two things together oh i've got a variety of ball bands in here they'll have to go into attach them to uh attach them to any of the spares I've got left over, any of the odds and ends. What do I mean? Scraps. Ah! You are a little drop of wonderful pin. I'm rubbish with pins. Another one. Sorry, very muse lady. I get sent pins and I, I rarely use them. And the reason being not because I don't like them, but it's just that I get things stuck on the back or if um, even if I've got it pinned so it's on the outside of a bag and this bit is inside a pocket because I'm pulling things in and out of a pocket all the time, the back rips off and then I lose the front of the pin and I only have the back. So I need to think of something to do with these. I've seen pin pennants and whilst they're a good idea, I don't know where I would hang one. I need to come up with an idea. I don't know. 
I don't know where to put these. I'll just keep thinking. Oh, that's from when me and Sherry Iris and Karen Cozy Corner Quilts got together for afternoon tea and Karen gave us some little progress keepers. Oh, that's cute. That's a bunny. It's like the, he's got hearts on him. He looks like something from um, Alice in Wonderland. And then an, an enamel shape. So I better put those with the rest of my stitch keepers and progress markers, which I said the other day how hopeless I am with them and using them. But I still, you know, it's a bit like these pins. I like to own them. I just don't know. I just don't use them properly. Anyway, they're not eating anything, are they? So they're fine. I'll just store them. Um, oh, I've got another lavender. This one's got bees on it. I think this one might have been from Rachel. Is that from you, Rachel? Can't remember. That can go in my stash on the scraps. How long have I been talking? I went to Exeter to meet Cherie. Cherie has got Ollie and Bella on Instagram and YouTube. Worth a follow for sure. And um, she doesn't live that far away from me. So we met one day in Exeter. We've met a few times now. Um, so I forget that she she was a friend I made from the internet. I feel like I feel like I've always known her in real life. It's a nice feeling. Anyway, um we met up and we went to Wool on the X, which is a really lovely wool shop just off the um just by the river in Exeter. And um I bought some yarn and I think it was fibre space yarn and I knitted it into this it's escaping me birds and anchors cowl which is like a bandana style sort of shape jobby you cast on at the top here and you do sort of an in increase rose type thing. I can't really remember how you did it. And then there was something that you did at the back and it gave you this ladder. It was just a naturally occurring ladder. Really clever, I really like that. I can't remember how it was done. And then there was just quite a simple lace panel going down. And it, it was this top section here, the way you knitted this, I'm sure you knitted it, I think you knitted it. Yes, you knitted it flat, backwards and forwards. And then when it was a triangular sort of shape, you joined it in the round. And then you just knitted round and round and round and it gave gives this sort of shape. Now, I'm beginning to think that I'm a bit of a tight knitter because lately things I've knitted have been coming up small. So I'm thinking I need to go up needle size because although my swatches turn out pretty accurate, I think as I'm going along, I'm tensioning the yarn a bit tighter. So this turned out quite a bit small, smaller. And also I was disappointed in this yarn because this has never been worn and it is like a pilled manky rag. Not pleased with that at all. But even though it turned out quite small, I'm actually pleased of that because it fits really snugly around my neck and also having just whinged about the yarn, it's so soft and smooshy and not a glimmer of scratch. Feels really nice actually. And I think it looks nice. 
I did make a mistake on the lace. I didn't realise until I was way, 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 way far along. Actually, it's so imperceptible. I forgot to, I think I, I, think I just knitted a row instead of purling or purled a row. I did something there, Luke, did you see it? <clears throat> no big deal. Right, that can go into my woolly pile. Um, that will do. Right, so that's me done. Bit of a long one today and not very vloggy, more of a podcast really. Um, and don't feel like I've really done a very good job and I don't feel like I've paused for breath either. But anyway, hope you <laughs> hope you enjoyed bits of it. See you tomorrow. Can't reach! <laughs>